You guys, today is a super exciting day because Best Buy is sponsoring this video. As you guys know, a little over a year ago, I decided to start a vlog channel, and honestly, I would say 90% of the content that I watch are vlogs. I just absolutely love vlog content, and I tried to create my own and incorporate them here on this channel, and it ended up hurting this channel, so I figured, you know what, if I want to vlog, then I should just start a second channel, and that's exactly what I did, and since I created that channel, I have learned a heck of a lot about vlogging. I mean, vlogs are so different compared to my normal sit down videos that I film in my office, but I would say one of the top requested videos from you guys is for me to share more vlogging tips. Because vlogs have absolutely taken off over the last few years, I think a lot of you want to start vlog channels or already have vlog channels and you're just curious how you can grow, some tips, some tricks on filming better vlogs, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's say we look good. The logistics of creating a vlog channel honestly is not complicated and I think a lot of people try to overcomplicate it because they want to have all of the answers and the tips and tricks before they even get started when the reality is like you just got to go and create a channel. If you already have one, you can actually have multiple channels under one email account or you can get another email address and start a channel that way pick a profile picture, design your banner image, and just get started. Like it's really not hard, the logistics of creating a channel. I would say more so actually filming your vlogs, coming up with the content to include in your vlogs, even like your equipment and all of that stuff. That's probably where you're getting held up, especially if you are just now getting started. So I definitely have a lot that I want to share in this video. I just need to wrap up getting ready and I'll meet you guys in my office. The thing with vlogs is that they look really easy to create. And I think that there's this common misconception. I mean, as like an influencer in general, I think a lot of people think that this world is really easy to do when in reality, this is my full-time job. Like it is gonna take me hours to make this one video. It's not like I just hit record, talked for a little bit, edited it, and it's done within like an hour. Like that's just not the reality of it. And the exact same thing with vlogs. When you're watching a really good vlogger, you may think that they just decided one day they were going to vlog, they picked up their camera, they recorded whatever happened during that day, and you've got an amazing video. When in reality, they were probably thinking about all the different angles and scenes they were going to get, the lighting, the audio, they were thinking about transitions and B-roll compared to talking scenes just like this and how they were going to form it into one full story. And then what the heck was the title gonna be? What the heck am I gonna make the thumbnail into? Like, do I need to get still shots of me doing whatever I'm doing to make it into a thumbnail? I'm sure they were thinking about all of that. You just don't really realize it. That's the thing with vlogging. When you first get started, it's going to feel really overwhelming because there's so much that is happening with a vlog, but the more you do it, the better you're going to get. So let's start with the basics and talk about your strategy. Now, typically my advice when you're first getting started with a channel is to figure out what your niche and the topic of your videos are. But when you're starting a vlog channel, my advice is a little bit different just because having a vlog channel that itself is a niche sure you could get a little bit more specific and you could say I'm gonna have a family channel maybe I'm gonna have a couple channel and it's gonna be like prank videos maybe it's gonna be a solo channel and it's gonna be you doing like RV life or something like there's so many different topics that you can narrow it down to when you do have vlogs you don't have to do that like my vlogs guys they're all over the place. I talk about business, I share house projects, my house plants. If that's what you wanna do within your videos, that's totally fine. But more specifically, like one of the questions that I get from you guys is how you come up with ideas of what you're going to include in your vlogs. Do you outline your vlogs? And I think that we need to talk about that. To answer the last question, no, I do not outline my vlogs. These videos, yeah, I've got an outline in front of me right now that is five pages front and back. We got a lot coming in this video, but for my vlogs, I do not create an outline for them, and I actually think it's better to not go into a vlog with an outline, but there's a couple of different strategies that you can choose when it comes to vlogging. So the very first one is to have absolutely no plan. You just decide on the day that you're going to vlog, and whatever happens that day, you're going to film it. Now, I would not recommend that, especially 
you're just now getting started with vlogging because you may run into the problem where you've got a very boring day and all you're doing is like your laundry, you've made yourself food, maybe you're hanging out with your dog and it's just like a super chill day in your life and at the end of the day you may realize you didn't film anything because you thought it was boring. Another strategy you guys can do is having a semi-plan and this is something that I do most of the time with my vlog channel where I have a general concept, a general idea of what's going to be included in the vlog, but I really just let it flow. So for example, recently I had meetings with financial advisors. I have got two appointments later this afternoon to meet with financial advisors. And I was like, okay, I am going to specifically plan to vlog on that day because I know that I can turn that one part of my day into content. And then I can film something interesting in the morning. The afternoon is going to be filled with those meetings. And then in the evening I can find something to film as well. But I had a general idea of what was going to be included in that vlog. And I know I've shared this before, but if you have no idea what to film, make sure that you plan your filming days for days that you have something exciting happening. It may not be the most exciting thing in the world. Like it could just be running a simple errand to Best Buy because you gotta get a new memory card. But if you have something on your calendar, don't be afraid to move your vlogging schedule around. Now, the last strategy that I wanna share with you guys is to have more of a fully planned vlog thought out. Now, I wouldn't say have an outline, but just have this vlog is going to be this one specific topic. So for example, recently I built a garden in my backyard. When I was creating that garden, I made sure that I vlogged the whole thing. And instead of the vlog being a full look at my day and what was happening during that garden build, I decided to only focus on what was going on with the build of the garden. So that's another strategy you can do. One of the things that I realized when I do use that strategy is that my audience doesn't like it as much. For me, I think those videos are better to rank in search. And it's nice if you're trying to attract a new audience to have videos that are really specific to one topic instead of including absolutely everything. But my audience more so wants the mess. They want a general topic for the vlog, but otherwise they wanna see everything that happens during my day. So I think it's important to remember that vlogging really has a lot to do with your personality and not so much to do with the activity that is included within the video. And I can't even tell you the amount of vloggers that I watch where I've just watched every single one of their videos, no matter what they're doing, because I just care about them and I just want to hang out with them. And that's exactly how I feel when I'm watching one of their vlogs. It's like I'm hanging out with a friend. And that was something that I definitely had to learn with my vlogging channel because I got started with my main channel first. A lot of my audience finds me because they're interested in the information that I provide within my content. And I thought the exact same thing was gonna be true with my vlogs. I really wanted them to be structured and focused on certain topics and I realized that really it had nothing to do with what I was actually doing in the video. It had more to do with my personality and that's one of the really cool things about vlogging. I've been doing a lot of talking and I really wanna make myself an iced chai, okay? This has been one of my favorite drinks recently. If you guys watch the vlogs, then you know. So it's time for a chat. Before we talk about equipment, because honestly, like we haven't even gotten to the part where you're actually going to film a vlog yet, we need to talk about time frame. So if you have a general topic or idea for the vlog, then you may already understand what your time frame is. And like, for example, is it gonna be like a what I eat in a weekend type of thing and you're gonna vlog in the weekend? Is it gonna be a full week vlog? Is it gonna be a daily vlog? Are you just gonna showcase one specific thing that you're doing, like a project, for example, and it's gonna be the full time frame of that project? Like. When is the start and when is the end of the vlog? Because the thing with vlogging is it's a lot about storytelling. And if you don't understand the time frame of the story, it's kind of hard to like figure out how the vlog is really going to flow together. But now that we're at the point of actually creating vlogs, let's talk about equipment and let's talk about Best Buy. I seriously love ice tries, guys. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna lie, when Best Buy reached out to me to do this partnership, I fangirled a little bit, okay? Because I've bought so many things at Best Buy for my business, like my desktop computer, my laptop, my cameras, and so much more of my gear has come from Best Buy. And having them want to work with me to share vlogging equipment with you guys is just the coolest thing in the world. So thank you again to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. As you guys know, a few years ago, I actually invested in my first camera. I got a new camera, which was the Canon M50. And that is the camera that I've been using since I absolutely love it. And I often get asked what's a great beginner camera. And I've always recommended this camera. 
until now. Because we've upgraded to the Canon M50 Mark II and I am so excited. The quality of the visual within this is absolutely great. I don't know if you guys have noticed within this video, it does have a flip out screen, which is really important if you are vlogging. You wanna make sure that you can see yourself, understand the frame and what's included in this shot. With the Canon M50 Mark II, you guys, you can shoot vertical videos. Obviously, vertical videos have become increasingly more popular over the years. So as well as filming your vlogs, you can also do that within this camera. And this can also be used as a webcam. So let's say you want to go live on your channel in the future, you can set this up as a webcam and then you get a high quality visual. Next up, okay, we got a microphone on top and this is another new microphone, which I'm excited to share with you guys. So audio can really take your videos up a level. And honestly, if you've ever watched a vlog where someone's not using a good microphone or just like the audio isn't great and you hear a lot of background noise, maybe you hear echo or even wind if you're vlogging outside, getting a good microphone is a must in my opinion. This is the Sure VP83 lens hopper condenser shotgun microphone. And I know that is absolutely loaded there. This mic, okay, it may look big, but in comparison to other ones that I've used in the past, this is not that big. It's very lightweight. Like this whole camera setup right here is really lightweight. I feel like I can throw it around. I know it's not going to easily fit in a purse or something, but this is going to give you a high quality visual as well as audio. So some of the benefits to using this microphone specifically, do you see the way it's shaped and this position right here. Okay. So when you are vlogging yourself, obviously the microphone's going to be facing you. So it's going to capture sound right here and it's going to reduce the sound from any unwanted noise in other areas of the room, as well as it's on this shock mount. Okay. This thing can wobble and it's like floating in air that reduces any vibration or mechanical noises. So let's say you're walking around with your camera and obviously like this is going to move, it's going to shake, but it's not going to capture any unwanted noise because it's on this shock mount it's going to absorb the best audio for you. The next piece of equipment I'm gonna share with you guys is in terms of lighting, and it's actually a ring light. I have never had a standing ring light before, and I'm so excited to have a recommendation for you guys. But when it comes to vlogging, let me actually take my camera off really quick. Right now, I am facing towards a window, and when you are vlogging, you do need to think about your lighting. Now, obviously, it's not as big of a deal if you're walking around and the lighting gets bad for like a second, but you wanna make sure that you're more so facing towards good lighting compared to facing away from it. Like that's not gonna make a good vlog, you know? There may be some areas where you're vlogging where you just don't have the best lighting. And for me, that is for sure in my master bathroom doesn't have the greatest lighting as well as my living room. My living room is the darkest room in my house and it's just so, so bad. I feel like this is like a little bit crooked here. And in those situations, just take a couple of extra minutes to set up the shot. So first figure out your camera placement and then your lighting what do you need to make the visual better? And here I want to talk to you guys about the Sunpack 19 inch bicolor ring light. You guys, I have a ring light. Like I, I am so excited to have a ring light, but usually my camera would be mounted right here. Obviously it's not here just so you guys can see what's going on, but it comes with this mini ball head to mount your camera on right here, as well as an adapter. So if you guys are filming any content on your phone, this can actually screw in right here or right here, depending on how you want your phone situated, like based off of what format of content you are trying to film. But with this ring light, okay, let me bring it a little bit closer just so you guys can see the visual. Obviously when you're filming videos, you wouldn't have it like this. This is a little bit silly here, but this is with it off. I'm gonna turn it on. It can go from 10% the whole way up to 100%. Like, do you see how bright that is? I currently have my camera on a set exposure so you guys can really get the full impact of this, but also it's by color. So right now I currently have it on cool tone. So cool LED lights right now, but I can switch it to really warm LED and do you just like see what it did? That's not what we're going for in this video. So let me I'm just like messing with these little knobs right here, getting this the way I want it. So this has 448 super bright LED lights and you guys saw like how bright this thing can get. It's seriously powerful. As of right now, like I have it at the right height for me, but if you're taller than me, I'm 5'10", if you guys are curious, but if you're taller than me, this thing does go up much higher. Let me just like show you really quick. Wow, this thing goes so tall. That's insane. Uh, so no matter your height, this is a good ring light option if you guys need some lighting to improve the quality of your videos. <laughs>
And the last thing I wanna share with you guys that you can get at Best Buy is actually an editing software option. Now, I often get asked to give you recommendations on editing software, especially ones that it doesn't matter what kind of computer you're using. So with Best Buy, you can get Adobe Premiere Pro, which is an editing software if you've never heard of it before, and it's really good for all different kinds of skill levels. You can edit any kind of video using that platform. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'm gonna include a link in the description bar down below, as well as links to all of the gear that I talked about in this video. Now back to the vlogging tips. I'm gonna share something with you guys that I feel like I shouldn't share, but I also feel the need to share. And that's to stop watching videos about vlogging tips, okay? Once you're done with this video, watch it the whole way through. Thank you for the audience retention rate ahead of time. But once you're done with this, cut it out. You're going to learn so much more by actually picking up your camera and trying to film a vlog than you are from videos like this. Or if you are going to watch any content, okay, watch other vloggers. And there's a reason why I filmed this video the way that I did, including the intro scene in the beginning. Like my main channel videos, I don't include stuff like that. But I did for this video because I wanted to give you an idea of how you can set a scene, get different shots, and really vlogging, okay, is all about the process. People don't just wanna see the end result, they wanna see the process. So I specifically came up with this video idea with the intro starting out of me waking up and getting ready for the day and then even setting up my camera and really starting this video, I wanted to include the whole thing because that's what a vlog's about. And when you watch other vloggers, I want you guys to really analyze what they're doing and pick up on the little things. Do you like the angles that they're getting? Do you notice how many different scenes they have? Are you paying attention to their B-roll and the music that they include? Like what about different sound effects, what is their editing like? Really analyze what you like about other vloggers and figure out how you can incorporate some of those things within your own videos. Even now, guys, like I, I'm not an expert vlogger. Like I've been only doing it for over a year. Yes, I've had a channel for four years at this point, but I am learning every single day. And when it comes to your vlogs, as well as just like any content in general, I want you guys to continue evolving. If you're still here watching this video, I'm gonna give you a challenge and I want you to follow up within the comments of the next video and let me know how you did. The next vlog that you create, I want you to try something new, whether it's incorporating a new scene that you've never done before. So let's say you've never, shared you taking out the trash. Include that within your next video. Or maybe you're just so used to one set filming style and you always do time lapses. This time, you're not allowed to do any time lapses. I want you to move your camera around a lot. I want you to get different scenes. I want you guys to show your view, like what you see from your eyes compared to if someone was in the room with you, what would they see? Like maybe what would your dog see at their angle? I really want you to challenge yourself and try something new. And let me know what you did to mix up your video and how you liked it, okay? you're gonna. Try try some things and it may be terrible and you may never want to do it again, but it pushes you outside of your comfort zone as well as it keeps your audience on their toes. Now, I think it is nice to have a little bit of familiarity within your content. For example, like when you guys watch my vlogs, you always know that the intro is going to be generally about the same. It includes the B-roll, it has the same music, it has the click with the date and then the click with the time. And I set that up in a way that like when you guys come back to my channel, you're like, Ah, this is familiar. You kind of know what to expect a little bit. But if every one of your vlogs is the exact same, what is going to keep people coming back for more? And this is, oh my gosh, so good, you guys. I don't know if I ever shared this tip before. Something that I do and I really take into consideration with my vlogs, and it's actually a comment that I've got before. Someone said that they feel like they have to watch every single vlog or they're missing something. And then they have to go back and watch older vlogs because I continue to reference things that I've already talked about in other vlogs. And the reason why I do that is because I want to create FOMO. I do not want my vlogs to stand alone. And when I was sharing that strategy of you can not have vlogs that are one specific topic and that's all they talk about, those videos are fine, but it's not going to keep people coming back for more. I would rather create videos that I mention in one in September, I've got a wedding in October, I've got a wedding. And then in another video, I show me trying on dresses to attend those weddings. Like I want all of my videos to work really well together and you guys to feel that you have to watch every single video to keep up with the storyline of my life. And it may just be because I'm an analytical algorithmic person. Like I absolutely love that stuff that even when I'm watching TV, I really try to analyze what the show maker is doing. That's keeping me coming back for more. And typically guys, it's like you get invested in the characters, you get invested in the storyline. And I want you guys to become invested in my life. And that's something that I really, really try to do with all of my vlogs. And I want it to seem like it's just another episode of a 
TV show. And here's another good tip for you guys. I really don't do this a lot, but recently I've been watching reality TV and I've realized that at the end of every episode, there's a cliffhanger making you want to start the next episode right away. And that's not necessarily something that I do within my content, but even if you tell your audience, hey, I'm going to follow up on this in the next video, make sure you subscribe and make sure you watch that video. Give them a little insight as to what's coming next or maybe start something and then finish it in another video. Like there's so many different ideas that you guys can get just from analyzing other content. And it doesn't necessarily have to be vlogs. It can also be episodes of your favorite TV show. But I think that's going to be it for this video, okay? I want you guys to get out there. I want you to start creating content. Stop overcomplicating it and overthinking it. Just pick up a camera and record yourself. Like you are going to get so much better just by your own experience than you are watching videos like this. But I am hoping that you got something helpful out of this, even if it just was like some inspiration of how to start a video with the way that I did it. Thank you so much to Best Buy again for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanna check out any of the vlogging equipment I mentioned in this video, make sure that you check the links included in the description bar down below. But that is it. If you guys did like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys back here on Tuesday with another video. That's like another tip. Can I give you guys one more tip? I got I gotta give you one more tip. Tell your audience what they can expect from your channel. When are you going to come back with another upload and give them cues to subscribe. Some people don't know that liking videos actually helps you out. So even telling them that may be a little bit beneficial for you to include within your content, but that's actually it. I swear I'm gonna go. Bye guys.